Hi guys, Chrissy Lynn here for Chrissy's Halloween special. <laughs> for all you Immortan Joes and Immortan Janes out there, I thought it would be really cool to make our own Immortan Joe mask from home. So I've got my special guest here to learn how to make this wonderful Immortan Joe mask. You may recognize her from other videos on the channel. This is Joy. Hello. And our model, our lovely special model, you've also seen her on the channel, Anastasia will join us later. You need a base, you need a mask. And right now in the 99 cent stores, this is where I found this little gem, they've got these bad boys. They're plastic, they're a pretty solid, significant, substantial plastic too, but they're only in, they're only a dollar. But if you don't happen to get one in the 99 cent store right now before they sell out, you can get them on Amazon, but they're gonna run you about eight to 10 bucks. So hoard up now. So you've got a mask, I've got a mask. Let's take a look at this real quick in comparison to the actual Immortan Joe mask. It has several pieces that are layered on top of it. It's got the little bolts, those little nuts you can see to kind of like lock things in. His is fully articulated. It does open and close. This does not. One of my other favorite materials to work with is actually Warbla. I am so interested in knowing about Warbla. Warbla is a, a type of thermal plastic. It's actually wood and plastic mixed together. There's a, a more rough side. The glossy side actually is the adhesive side to stick to itself. You can actually pick up Warbla at Plastic Depot if you live in Los Angeles in the Valley. Um, PlasticDepot.com. Let's heat up a few pieces. You're going to want to cut them pretty small. I've already cut them out for you. So here's a piece for you. Yes. Go ahead and get your scissors. I basically cut off a piece, something symmetrical to about eh, like four inches, something like this. That's going to be your little tiny piece on top. See okay. how he's got this little part? Yeah. All right, so go ahead and make that a little shorter. Round off one of the edges and then round off the other edge. I'm taking a big scrap piece like this and I'm okay. basically going to cut it into what resembles a Superman shape. Well, Everyone Superman, knows what yeah, Superman's right, logo looks like. <laughs> And we're just building the bridge. We're gonna build on top of the bridge of the mask. This will actually stick to the plastic because it's plastic. You're gonna need a hot gun, a little heat gun like this. How much do the heat guns usually? About 20, 30, sometimes more. It just oh, really okay. depends, but it's kind of an investment. If you don't have a heat gun, people use blow dryers. If you mess up, can you like restructure it? Yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah, you can layer it and layer it, but smoothing it out and avoiding bubbles is gonna be one of those things that reminds you if you want to keep using Warbla forever or not. So let's get your little Superman shape. So right in the center, you're going to cut up, but you're going to create like a little teardrop. So it's going to look something like... Oh yeah, it went the wrong way. <laughs> uh, all good. Like that. Now you're almost kind of getting to see the shape that it's going to eventually be on the mask. <laughs> I don't think mine's big enough. And we're done, done! <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and start heating mine. See, it's all wobbly. Wobbly. Awesome. Isn't that cool? But it's gonna dry pretty fast, so I'm just gonna... Molding it around, making it take the shape. Is it possible to overheat it? Yes. What happens, how do you know when, you're, when enough is enough? When you can't really do anything with it, you gotta let it cool. So I'm gonna heat it even though it's already on here which is cool because it's plastic on plastic. It's totally fine. It's not going to go anywhere or do anything. And then I'm going to press it in, wrap it around. Even if it runs into the little foam part that's for cushioning underneath the nose, that's totally fine. So they're not supposed to crisscross, right? <laughs> they are not. But yours could be super unique. And that's your own individual design. <laughs> I'm super into it. Fix it, Joy. Fix it. You may have a really awful looking application or fabrication, but if that paint job is legit and it photographs well, who cares? That who I can cares? do. Awesome. I'm really good at coloring books. Oh. <laughs> I had a lot of time at home. That little piece that you cut off before. Uh -huh. So now this will help you gauge where, like how big or too small that is. So that's essentially what that's going to look like. So if you notice on the Immortan Joe mask, little teeny <laughs> tiny ribbit. Um, now, they're so small, generally, for that same look, I would suggest googly eyes. You can get them in the pack, in the bundle, at Joann's, Michael's has them in various shapes and sizes. It's the <laughs> dome shape you're looking for. I'm not going to do that this time because they don't come this small. Instead, what I ended up doing was actually taking my scraps of Warbla, 
and cutting little pieces. If you actually keep it like a, this size so it doesn't slide around and you get like a ceramic or well, porcelain specifically because porcelain is actually burned at the highest temperature to prevent breaking and cracking. Science. <laughs> um, I use that so that the pieces don't fly around and I actually put the heat directly into this. The only problem with the smaller the piece, if it's hot, it'll cool a lot faster. Here's a little piece. There you go. Thank you. And just roll it around, a little ball, little tiny. And then before you get it to like flatten it, press it up against the table. All right, now that we've got our paint done and out of the way and over with, let's take a look at what the mask sort of should kind of look like by now. It's not bad, huh? The one piece we're gonna do next is actually where the nose is. If you see on his mask, it's all kind of solid and black. What I'm gonna use is actual screen, screen material that you'd find on your windows or your screen door. So I just cut a little piece here. I'm gonna kind of measure it to make sure it fits on there. You can layer it a few times, but this also helps with the ventilation. So when you're in here, you can also breathe out of it as well, even though there are some holes here and there. So that's kind of uh, what it's gonna look like. And with a little black acrylic paint. So yeah, that's kind of what that looks like. All right, so once that's all done and in there, I could poke at it some more, add some more detail, some more depth, some more paint if I want. But I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna stick on the tubing now, the side parts that go right here. But it's technically just pipe insulation foam, which I Poodle. use on all of my wings. Poodle! <laughs> and that's kind of what we're gonna do with this mask. And we're gonna glue it, we're just gonna stick it on there and it's done. Except we don't really want it to look like this. We're actually gonna wrap it in material and then we're gonna paint the material to look like that hose that he's got. And the best part, it's so lightweight, it's not gonna wear you down at the end of the night when you're all like drunk and stumbling over things. If you do that, be safe about it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start on that right now. go ahead and stick this bad boy on. The nice thing about this mask is it came with a little strap. Now if you want to make adjustments, make it longer, um, change out the strap altogether, you can. So shiny, so chrome. Okay, spray me, spray me. So how did I do? Mediocre. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us for the Halloween special. This concludes the episode of the Morton Joe Mask. Happy Halloween and witness. witness.